there, my name is Chris and welcome to my channel and I am so excited to bring you the premiere of the new Bachelor season starring the Colton Underwood. This is season 26, honey, and this was the live premiere, honey. It was three hours long. Chris Harrison's mom was there. Okay, did I pay attention to every morsel of it? No, but having said that, I went in with a virgin ears and a virgin heart and I wanted to be on this ride with Colton, who I've grown to love over the seasons, you know, seeing him sort of spread his wings on television. Now he's quite the tanned, chesseled gentleman, and I'm happy to be, you know, like his aunt for this. That doesn't quite know his sexuality yet, but you know, those younger people, it's all fluid anyway. I love his little like promo. His promo is like him jogging in the beach and he has like such a little funny gait, you know, he has a little like, Pigeon foot gate. He's just so Colton-y. Can't ever have sex with Colton. He's so Colton. He's Colton-y. You know, he's Colton, you know. Of course he's hot. I mean, if you wanted to go down on me, probably, but like... Have sex with him. I don't know if I could, you know. I care more about the girls anyway, and so should you. So my favorite and yours is the first girl we're introduced to, and I think low-key maybe Colton's down the road, is Cassie, and she's from Huntington Beach. Hi, Southern Orange County. And she's cute as pie, like, doesn't quite know, like, is a little naive, has that beachy wave, is like a speech therapist, like, all she knows sign language, like, I don't know, God bless, but she is just, like, so cute. And like kind of shy and like if that's not her true character and if she's just playing that character then that's fine. She's doing a good job and she can stay. The next girl is Hannah from Alabama and she just keeps saying Roll Tide. Now we find out that Hannah is a beauty queen. She like is Miss Alabama. You know what I'm saying? But she's also like down home in country. Hannah from Mama. Hannah from Mama. Katie's from the East Coast. She's a dancer. Um it's weird though because of, yeah, like for her solo, I just was a little like underwhelmed. Now here's the thing, you're talking to someone who has watched copious So You Think It Can Dances. So when I'm used to seeing a solo, I'm used to seeing like a fight for your life. This is your first time on TV. Let's see you dance solo. She just kind of like was freestyling some doubles. Then we're introduced to Heather, also from Southern California, and her whole thing is that she has never been kissed, much like the Drew Barrymore film. It feels like you we could be watching her right after a growth spurt, and she's just like come into her swanhood after being like a little like a uh, duck. You know what I'm saying? A little bit. Like, and I was an unduck. You know what I'm saying? So I can say that. But, like, because she seems a little like a gazelle just learning to walk. You know, I think that she maybe has come from an awkward stage, which I have, so I get and I can see, which is why I can say this. Okay? So... Just saying that. We also find out that she took a pic with Colton at like one of Colton's charity galas that he had in Southern California. And Colton does a pretty good job of remembering the moment when she shows him the pic. Mm -mm. Then we meet Ayange. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Her parents married after two weeks, so she totally gets this thing of like, oh, like a hurry. You know the, you know the one when you meet him. You know what I'm saying? Let's get this thing on the road, honey. Then we meet Nicole from Miami. Now she's so sick of that hookup culture, honey, and she's also like living a double life because she's like hot and Latina and saucy, but she also like cares for her like autistic brother and she lives with her abuelita. They make like hot chocolate every morning. Every morning. And they all three drink it out of mugs. It's so cute. We're really gonna miss her when she's gone. Who's gonna care for the brother? Then we meet Kerpa. She's a dental hygienist. She just wants to clean his teeth. She's some wittier. So that's Kerpa. Let me meet Demi. Demi. She is a country interior decorator. She's tiny. Now here's a twist. Her mother is in prison for embezzlement. Mm. But she still talks on the phone with her. She lives with her dad, obviously. But here's something else. The next time she meets her mom could be with Colton. You know, Demi, Demi is a little spitfire. She says, you gotta try all the cupcakes and I'm the confetti one. That's the one you usually pick. Cause it's bright, fun. That's me. Country confetti. Country confetti. Then after this, like, I mean, we're in like, I don't know. We're in like the 45 minute mark and we finally like see Colton. He's like showering, honey. He's like getting ready like Colton, you know, like getting dressed in a tux, okay? 
that's what he's doing. And then it starts, like, we're done with introductions. I'm like kind of glossing past what was ha what's happening. Look, listen, they did a live for three hours and it's like, they're going to like parties and they have the correspondence from ghosts of the past. It's kind of like a Christmas carol. Ghosts from the past, all tanned up and like given interviews from places like Lansing, Michigan, you know, like at parties and things. That's what's happening for the extra hour that we didn't need. Okay. But do you want me to like report on that? Like, okay. I don't know. Caitlin looks different is what I would say. Jojo and her got the same spray tan. They just like sprayed them both at the exact same time. You know, it was a two for one deal. I would also say like there was like no less than two engagements on this live. Do you guys like watching other people's engagements when you just don't know them at all? And it happens so fast. It's like, I'm Jan. This is my boyfriend, Doug. Doug gets on one leg and it's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And like, it's just like, oh, okay, Jan and Doug, okay. I mean, I don't know. I'm not reaching for your Amazon registry is what I'm saying, Jan and Doug. That's not their names. Colton is at the Mega Mansion and he has his little like bro pep talk with Chris Harrison. Like, here it goes, the ride of your life. You know, the most virginic, I mean, dramatic season ever, you know, and Colton's like, haha, good one. This is probably the only time any guys will talk about the virginity thing, right? And the first limo comes. Have you guys ever milked a cow? I have. I think everyone should. I think everyone should work at a restaurant or work in customer service and milk a cow because it's very interesting and you find out where your food comes from. You have to feel the teat. You have to squeeze it and then have the milk come out. It, it is horrifying and glorious and mesmerizing and life affirming at the same time. And that's what the producers of The Bachelor must feel like every time they talk about Colton's virginity. I like to think milking a cow. Listen, other people would say beat a dead horse, okay? That's them. But what I'm saying, you know, is that they talk about it a lot. All the time. First out of the limo is Demi, and she is in yellow, honey. Demi, I'll never know, you know, and I'll never say it right. You know me. She says something that just is really affirming to his masculinity and doesn't make him awkward about being virgin at all. She says, I haven't dated anyone that's a virgin since I was 12. First of all, you dated people at 12? I mean, God bless. Okay. Uh, I mean, okay, the South. I mean, I get it. Okay. But, okay. And that was the last time they were a virgin? I mean, who? She got in a relationship with someone who was also 12, and then, then they were in a relationship like Brittany and Justin until they were like 21. You know what I'm saying? That's what happened. And so she lost her virginity to Justin, her version of Justin, and they wore matching denim outfits at one time. And it was cute. Later on, she's like, he's so tall. He makes me feel like a tiny baby. That's also not sexy. Do you have some problems? Should we talk about it? Will later stuff be revealed? What's your game, Demi? Demi. Then we meet Tayasha. And Tayasha's just like, I don't really know you. And I'm like, yeah, girl, good. <laughs> Be honest. She walks away and he's like, she's gorgeous, which is one of the very few things he says. She, he says a lot of, she's gorgeous after girls. I'll tell you which ones. Then Heather comes, the one that hasn't ever been kissed in a red dress and her like long, long, long hair that looks kind of Amishy and then that it should probably be cut. And if she was on like America's Next Top Model, you know, they would give her like a makeover and you'd be so happy about it. <sighs> anyway, Nicole comes, you know, Nicole from Havana. She's like, half my heart's in Havana, half my heart's with you. Havana, ooh na na. Half of my heart is in Havana, ooh na na. He took me down to East Atlanta, ooh na na. But she's rocking this like cute silk number and I like it, you know, like there's gonna be themes of the night and the themes of the night is sequins and girl, zah, I love a sequence. I'm Lebanese, I can get down like with sequins or whatever. I'm usually the only girl with sequins and this was like a goddamn pageant, literally and figuratively and literally and always is a pageant, but this is like literally the time that it's a pageant because all the girls wear sequins, sparkly sequins. It was a C. Speak of the devil, I meet Kaylin, not Caitlin. It could be Caitlin, but I'm 90%, it's just Kaylin. She wears a sash, honey, it says Miss Carolina. And then she turns it around and it says Miss Underwood. She's cute. She was very Miley Cyrus-y in the face. Not that's a bad thing, just like, you know, I like to make comparisons. That's who that one looks like a little bit. 
can't stop, won't stop. She also gets a, she's gorgeous from Colton. Then we get Sydney, who is an NBA dancer. She had to like quit her job to be here. So, you know, he should take that into consideration. Colton's like, I'm a terrible dancer. She's like, I know from what we know about you, the one thing that we always talk about about you, obviously you wouldn't be a good dancer. That takes time and practice. You haven't danced. Elise is there. She's wearing blue and she has red hair, which is always a great combination. She's a makeup artist, you know? Then we meet Tajwan and she comes out with a super cute thing to say. She's like, my name is Tajwan, which is not like, you know, the most common, whatever. You're gonna meet like a billion Kaylins and Kaylins and God bless Colton. But like one way to remember that is I'm the Tajwan for you. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's, you have to make it easy for guys sometimes. You know, it's like, Hadam on meeting all those girls just like sparkle sparkle <laughs> titty titty then my girl Cassie comes out she's wearing a dress that's <laughs> she comes out with a little like tin box and then she like opens it up and she's like I have butterflies you think that butterflies are just gonna like come squirting out and I'm a little scared about that because I've seen for weddings enough times to be like that doesn't always what happens you open the butterflies or remember RuPaul's Drag Race, God bless, or wherever you think butterflies are gonna do something that they are gonna do their own thing, which usually is just hang out wherever they are. But she knew that's what she used, just like fake butterflies. And the moment worked. And then Colton, when she leaves, goes down and picks up a butterfly and puts it in his pocket. Then Kerpa comes in like a gorgeous purple sequins gown. She's part of the sequins committee. Caitlin comes, one of the Caitlins, with like a cherry balloon, and then she like makes him hold it and then she pops it. That's pretty funny. But that kind of starts this, all right, well now the girls are gonna top each other. Like everyone's gonna have a new thing to come in with. How is this gonna heighten? Is one of you just gonna like kill yourselves or give birth to his kid right there? Or, like take his DNA like right there and more like propose or like make a baby and just, like go to the future right there and then and just like already be engaged. I don't know how you could top it. Courtney comes, Courtney's from Georgia and she brings like a peach and she's like, I'm a sweet Georgia peach. I love peaches. And I love a guy who can enjoy a peach. Then it's like a barrage of girls talking about his like virginity, like one takes like a V card, you know, by like making him pick like a card and a magic deck. I can't do everything, but it's like all this stuff happens. And then it's like the girls who talk about the virginity versus the girls who don't talk about the virginity and like what that says about you and like what would you pick and what would you pick? Tell me down stairs. Then honey, we get Alex dressed as a sloth. And we have to, and this is why it was three hours long, watch these long ass scenes of Alex pretending to be a sloth because she commits to something when Alex commits, I guess. Hi. you want to kill yourself you're just like oh my god i'm like oh my god where is the knife can i just like can i take myself out with one of these really beautiful coasters i got from anthropology during the 30 percent off sale this is not a sponsored video onika comes looking like a slipper snack erica comes and her thing is like her last name is mcnutt so she brings nuts so you remember but then he doesn't end up remembering and it's awkward then hannah from alabama comes and like the first thing he says is roll tide and honey she gets so excited she's like oh my god oh my god he said roll tide <gasps> then we find out the competition between beauty queens that would be kaylin and hannah because one was miss carolina and one was like miss alabama and like one like one over the other but like don't worry it's not a thing i hope it's a thing then Popo comes, like a full car, and like they roll up, and someone comes out of the driver, and that's Tracy, who is a fashion stylist, and she wanted to make sure that no one was making any fashion crimes this evening. Wait, does Alyssa Edwards have a sister? Because Alyssa Edwards has a sister, and that sister is Tracy, right? That is Alyssa Edwards. And then they make a little joke like Colton's like, we'll save those handcuffs for the fantasy suite. I was like, oh my God, you're gonna go from one to a billion? Come on. More sequins like Angelique and Purple Glitter, Devin Sparkly Squad, Nina speaks Croatian and there becomes like a barrage of people that speak a different language and wanna tell them about it. Like Rivian, is that her name? Mandarin. She says Mandarin for I think you're a stud muffin. Colton is a stud muffin. Alex B comes, she's sick. Bree comes, honey. Brie. Brie's gorgeous. But that wasn't enough for Brie. She wanted to stand out, you know? I think because she was like, oh no, I'm wearing a red dress and I'm blonde, I'm skinny, like what do I do? And so Brie was like,
I'm gonna do an accent. Now, is she good at the accent? For like the first two seconds, and then it quickly melts away because that's not her real voice. And if you are Australian, you're like, that's not an Australian person at all. She's like, she wouldn't get hired for an Outback Steakhouse commercial. Not never. But I wanna see more of her. So she did the right thing. Then we meet Laura, who's from Dallas, and she looks just like Kat Dennings from Two Broke Girls mixed with Amanda Seyfried. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God, for sure. Just like pull up like an extra page and all their tabs and look at their pictures. She's also wearing the same red dress as like Never Been Kissed Girl. It's cute. It's a red dress. Anna G gets a, you're gorgeous afterward, you know? I don't know how many times he said it. Maybe he only said it once to one girl that he just kept replaying it, editing it back in. I'm not quite sure. Jane comes, she loves her dog. Photoshopped her picture of her dog with Colton's dog. Dogs. Then one of the girls inside's like, everyone's so cool. We're just like waiting for that bitch to come. Like, cue Catherine, who comes in with her dog, her actual dog, and then just like gives it to Colton. It's like, hey, you take care of this, bye. And I was like, yeah, I'm in. Okay, I'm in. Thank you. In. Then a horse and carriage comes and a girl comes out. She's Cinderella wearing a blue dress, you know, like leaves a shoe. Her name's Erin. And then other girls are like, oh my God, everyone's doing so much. They're doing the most. Was my thing not enough? Because people are doing the most. Then people are doing the mostest. And then people on top of that are doing the very most mostest of all most mostests. I'd hate to be in that situation. We still have an hour and a half to go. God bless. And Colson addresses all the girls and he goes, I hope my wife is standing in his room right now and it cuts right to Cassie. Then Fishtail McNutt asks Colton right to the chase, A, do you know my name? He's like, no. And then also be like, why you're a virgin? And he's like, um, it's like waiting for the right person. It's not like a marriage thing. It's like a right moment thing. You know, whole thing like a special, I think it's special thing. So that's why. Then Molly Cyrus gets the first kiss. Whew. But like no one sees it. I wish the other girls saw it more. How do other people get away with it like he does? Like, other people are staring at the bachelor all the time, but he just, like, seems to get away with his kisses. Also, the way he kisses, honey, it's like, this is what happens. Colton makes a decision that he's going to kiss, and then he, like, leaves space and time, and then just, like, goes in for it. So they are start to talk like he's not in the present moment enough to be like, oh, I'll stop, or wait a little bit and see if they're going to start talking. Like, he just, like, I'm gonna kiss him. <laughs> so interesting. My God, and then like one person like creates a carnival for them to have like a talk. The sloth like goes in a tree. I mean, it's like, what is, what is this five hour joust fest I'm watching? The sloth um, slash Alex also starts to like talk in a New York accent. Then we get her to be revealed by Colton. He like takes her thing off and the girls are like, oh, she looks maybe interesting out. Oh, her hair is pretty. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm. I'm not worried. Then, as the girls are trying to like steal him away, becomes the drama of the night. Thank you, Catherine, who just is like, I want time with him. My time, more time, your time, all the time. So she gets it. In this weird display of people can't say no for some reason on the show. She keeps butting into people's like time with Colton, like, I am sorry, but can I get some more time? And all these girls are like, okay. And then just get up. And Colton doesn't either. Colton could have been like, you know, we've had like literally three conversations. Maybe I should just like keep talking to this one. What do you say? We'd like meet up after talk later, you know, like, but no, no one says anything. Everyone's just like, okay, you rule the world. Somehow we're all contractually. There's a producer, must be a producer behind her being like, you know, like I, that's the only way I can understand what's happening. You know, like some girls try, come be like, stop doing that. Like one girl comes in, like snorkels in and is like, I'm saving you from bitches when he's talking to Catherine, but he doesn't really want us to be saved. And then she goes and tries to talk to like, what's her name? I forgot. I don't know. She goes and tries to talk to Catherine and is like, the other girls, me, are like really pissed about what you're doing. And so like, you're just like stealing other people's time. And like, Catherine just takes her down in such a crazy way is like, oh really? So sorry about that. I would hate for girls to be upset at me. Well, <laughs> when you're doing something right, you're gonna get haters, right? And then the girl like is like, well, that was a really great conversation. And Catherine's like, yep, 
she reminds me a little Corinne Olympios, you know, like, and I love me some early Corinne. I really hope that like nothing goes wrong. I want me some more of her, you know, like she's already going to be in Bachelor in Paradise. I'm already excited about it. Mark my words. But after my conversation, she literally butts in again, like four times. It's a record of how many times someone has butt in and been like, I want more time. And it's crazy and it keeps happening. And Colton is, you know, a little bit of a pussy for never saying anything and not stopping it. I'm gonna say it. It's disrespectful for the other girls at some point. You should be like a man and stand up. I want a man. I don't want a little boy. So then the little boy Colton has a decision to make. The first impression rose and who's he gonna give it out to? And they're talking about it just as he comes into the room and decides to give it to Rose Gold Hannah. Not Hannah from Mama. Rose Gold Hannah. Slender Rose Gold Hannah. Who they talked a little bit and I saw a little sparkle in their eye and you know, but like it wasn't like, the producers didn't make a big deal of it, but like yeah, that's who he gave it to. Slender Rose Gold Hannah. Nervous, I need you and your mom's technique of how to breathe Hannah. Took his breath away, took his, the first impression rose. Maybe because he got to be the one in charge and he got to make himself feel like he was being like, this is how you fix the situation, your nervousness. You know, by taking deep breaths. My mom told me that. So back in us in studio, there's a moment with Chris Harrison where like they Skype in Chris Harrison's mom and it's super cute and they do like a mega mix of Chris Harrison being, you know, very good at his job over the years. That's how I would describe that long video. Very good at his job. Very good host. But one of the best in the business. Deserves all the money. Deserves all the money and success. I'm glad that he's a producing, executive producing the show all the time. I hope he's just swimming in money. He deserves it. So then, honey, it's time for the rose ceremony. I don't know to say, like, the, he gives it to people and then he doesn't give it to other people. These are the people he gives it to. Cassie, who I like. Kaylin, Katie, Caitlin. Else, Lily's, Alex B, Hannah B, Inio, or Annie, Kerpa, Heather. The never wins kissed. Demi, who says I will happily accept your rose. Someone named Cassie, maybe. I'm bad at this. Erica, Brie, who like lost her accent by the rose ceremony. Catherine's like everyone's freaking out. But I don't care. And I'm like not sweating at it. I know how this goes. I'm gonna be last. You'll see. <laughs> And she's right. Tracy's pick, Nicole, the Cuban, thank God. Then Catherine. And Catherine just slinks up to that rose, honey, like Kim Basinger's character in Cool World with them lips. Takes the rose. <laughs> Goes back. Cinderella was unfortunately turned back to a poor stepsister that's like gonna go back and clean houses for the rest of her life. It's like the antithesis of how that story should turn out because he does not pick her. All right, you guys, that was the whole episode. Thank you so much for watching and being on this journey with me. Oh my God, can you believe it? We'll see what happens on the road to Colton's underwear heart penis virginity v card fantasy suite what's gonna happen in the fantasy suite we're all gonna find out i guess god bless there should be an episode or a scene where he goes to like a sex therapist and just make sure he gets like all the questions he might have out or any of the insecurities he ha might have out so everything is smooth sailing for these girls that would be a nice insurance that producers could kind of make just a thought anyway if you haven't yet please like this video please subscribe i'm not a huge youtuber i really need the numbers so please subscribe please like this video if you haven't yet, please follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I am at Chris L. Farah. And the L is for Lucy, who is Catherine's dog. That like Chris Harrison has to like just like walk and take care of in this episode. Anyways, take care of yourselves and each other. Stand up for what you believe and make art. Okay, bye.